Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Jacob DeGate, and we have two very special guests here with us today. First up, we have Amy Ponson, who is the Executive Director of Catholic Foundation of South Louisiana. And we also have Karen David, who's sitting next to me, who is the Interim Chief Administrative Officer and Board Chairman of Catholic Charities. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'll start off uh, with you, Amy. Uh, just to, some good news I hear that we, yeah. that uh, you all have received uh, a large grant. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. And first, thank you so much for having us on. Um, you know, these last couple of months have been so challenging for our community, and um, it's, Catholic Charities has really been doing a phenomenal job. And me at the foundation have been very excited to be able to partner and, and support Catholic Charities in their efforts. But just most recently, we were the recipient of a, such a generous grant from the Bayou, uh, uh, the Bayou Community Foundation of a half a million dollars. Wow, that's, that's, I know. A, that's a large it's, amount. They have been one of our most beautiful partners in the community to make sure that, you know, nonprofits, not just Catholic charities, but nonprofits across our, um, the area, have the funding necessary to do the great work that they that needs to be done. Um, and Catholic Charities being that recipient, um, these funds are being used directly for financial assistance for those impacted by Hurricane Ida. Karen has been part of leading that effort for us with Catholic Charities, and um, she'll tell you a little bit about more of the, the, you know, the details behind case management and how those financial assistance dollars uh, will go to good use across the, the diocese. Sure, sure. If you can tell me, and I guess a little bit, you know, who are what areas of the bayou are, are these this impact going towards? Well, we're impacting Terrebonne, mm -hmm. Lafourche, and then Grand Isle and Jefferson Parish. So, uh, our entire diocese mm -hmm. was hit pretty hard. And um, so, what we're doing is we we started off with an initiative with case management, and we're ramping up our case managers as we speak. We're actually looking for more case managers as well. And part of that process is probably back, probably the last two months, we interviewed probably over 3,100 uh, families that were needing wow. some type of assistance. So what we're doing is trying to assess some of the immediate needs, some mm -hmm. of the intermediate needs, and then some of the long-term needs. So with the grant that we got from BCF, which has been so generous, um, we're going to use that for our individual family assistance. And what that includes is it could include... Um, temporary hotel stays, assistance with utilities, rental assistance. Uh, some of these people lost their jobs. Uh, right now, we've been placing a lot of orders for mattresses, pillows, uh, sheets, bedding, those kind of things that their houses were destroyed, and so they're just trying to get um, in, their, in their dwelling, whether they have a FEMA trailer, a state trailer, or a camper, sometimes they just need the things that they lost in the storm. Sure. And in those case manners that you're looking for, is that volunteer positions? Or? No, it's actually um, people who have probably had some experience with case management. We're looking for case managers as well as case workers. So um, in some cases, there, there'll be a little bit more difficulty in, you know, with permits and some of the other work mm -hmm. that we do. We are doing muck and gut, which basically means we're tearing out the inside and removing all the mold, molded materials. Mm -hmm. Then um, mold remediation is being done as well. And then there's a lot of other not-for-profits that are actually helping with repairing roofs, uh, repairing windows, uh, re, um, repairing porches, ramps. We've had a, a lot of uh, requests lately for a couple of ramps for the disabled, mm -hmm. for them just to get in and out of their houses. Sure. And so, um, you know, I guess the main thing, that $500,000 all going directly to, to families to help with their, their recovery from the storm. Is yeah, that right? that's the most important thing because this is a long-term effort. It's not just a 12-month effort. We're committed as long as, as uh, the needs are there. We <laughs> committed that as a diocese that we're going to walk with the people until they get some closure. The biggest thing right now is... Um, FEMA and people trying to get in FEMA trailers. Some people are still living in their cars. Uh, some of them are still living in tents. I found out today that a couple of them I heard are still on generators. So wow. those are the things that you thought that they were mm -hmm. out of into a next mode, but it's just taking time. Yeah, and that, that's really difficult. I mean, we've had some cold weather. It, it's still cold out there. And just imagine all those people still, you know, this many months after the storm are still struggling. Well, we uh, actually did put several families in the hotel when the freezes came. We wanted to remove them out 
of course some of them wanted to go back home because they were more comfortable in their dwelling whether whether they had a hole in the roof or they were living mm -hmm. around some mold it's just they they don't want to leave their belongings behind yeah, there's nothing like being in your own home uh, i understand it's tough to get away some i mean when you don't want to leave home home is home is home that that's exactly. what it is you know that's where you feel comfortable and it, it's tough to to pick up and move when you don't have that uh now catholic charities itself can you tell me some other other you know things that they so catholic we charities have do? um we have caritas feeding mm -hmm. ministries so we have four uh food banks mm -hmm. two were actually destroyed um with ida so uh, we have one open in thibodeau one open in raceland we are uh in the next two weeks in Galliano, we're moving into temporary housing. Um, our building was completely destroyed. Um, it has not been demolished yet, mm -hmm. so it's still as it is. Uh, and then um, that'll open in two weeks. And then uh, East Homa will probably open in February in a temporary setting as well. And our plan is to um, actually work with a lot of the churches and build a network of food banks as well as food pantries so that we can get the food closer to the to the clients. Sure, I'm sure there, there's a lot of need out there and a lot of need for donations. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, you know that where, where people can find out more information to donate? Well, first of all, we have a great partner with the food banks as mm -hmm. well, and that's Second Harvest out of the uh, greater New Orleans area. Um, they have been working with us, uh, especially in the Galliano area, because we have not been open since the storm. Mm -hmm. So that we're going on five, six months. So we have um, six scheduled distributions, four in the Galliana area, one in the East Homa area, and uh, one in the Thibodeau area in March. And the most important thing is, is since we can't get the people to come into our food banks and those mm -hmm. that are closed, Second Harvest is committed to make, make sure that they have food ready for the people. So what we do is we have, we have a pretty, we've done several mass uh, distributions so we just line the cars up, we have all the stations, and that's how we're feeding now. Mm -hmm. um, Thibodeau and Raceland are receiving food donations as we speak. Okay. We also have a thrift store for uh, clothing donations in, um, in Raceland, and um, we're ho holding some of the clothing and asking people to hold clothing in Galliana until we open up in two or three weeks. Um, we have other partners um, that you know, just in the community, they'll have different drives. The churches will have drives. The Boy Scouts will have drives. And they also make donations throughout the years as well. Yeah, and you, you talk with people who, who have had, you know, substantial damage to their, to their homes. And, you know, it, sometimes you forget that, you know, they just have, they have to run to the store to buy a new, new shirt, new shoes, because they don't, they don't have anything at all. Uh, they, they lost everything in that storm. So that, that's one way you can look to give back is, the, is those donation uh, places. And one of the misconceptions, I think, um, to, to help most people in the community realize that is maybe Catholic charities, but we serve every denomination, every person, doesn't matter who they are, what kind of background they have, if the family is in need, Catholic Charities is there for, for them. Um, a, a huge percent of our, our population that we do serve in our food banks and through disaster actually aren't even Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, so very ecumenical in uh, the way we support and that's the, the part of our faith that we like to live out and, and comforting the people that are within our communities. Um, so it's, a, it's an exciting thing for Catholic Charities to be able to continue to reach out and be there for, um, for the people in need. Um, and, and we're gonna be there for the long run. Not sure. Now, now the Catholic Charities itself, are y'all made up of volunteers? Do y'all have a volunteer network? Or? Yes, we, we have a volunteer coordinator that um, we have many people calling in, a lot of not-for-profits calling in, a lot of uh, schools calling for, a donation, uh, for donating their time. Mm -hmm. um, we have people from uh, organizations, Knights of Columbus. We have church groups. We have... Um, just families who want to demonstrate to their kids mm -hmm. that um, people that are in need that you can help them as well. We're working with AmeriCorps volunteers right now, so we have a solid uh, group of guys that come in probably every three to four weeks. Uh, they have rotations, so that helps us with the muck and gut and doing some of the other things that we need. But more importantly is we're working through our church parishes as well as just on social media asking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Right now we're looking for some volunteer supervisors to help 
bring some groups of the volunteers to work on the muck and gut we're trying to find some leaders maybe some retired people who are have days during the week that they may have some skills with the muck and gut and you know ripping molded walls off the wall those kind of things so we're also looking for those types of people to help us lead us with these initiatives and that doesn't take too much effort I mean when somebody was asking us most recently what kind of um, skill set do they need to have you know just being able to to lift maybe 20 pounds and be able mm -hmm. to move that um, you don't have to be um, super young by any means <laughs> just an able body that's willing to sure. give of their time and their energy um, stewardship of time and talent is so important to be able to do all these types of things um, sometimes it's just washing down that wall so if you're able to wash down the wall it helps that person look at that task that their house is kind of crumbling around them but to accomplish one or two things is so monumental for that person and that family um, so the volunteers have kind of a variety of different skill sets and abilities as long as they're willing and able and um, wanting to put a little elbow grease in we will <laughs> willingly take them <laughs> and we've we've actually networked with some of the other not-for-profits that are working doing some of the same things the muck and guts some of them are just doing roofs some of them are just doing handiwork type of thing so we're trying to network with those people because we have the the database that we need people to help out is just trying to get to them all at the same time sure and we got about a minute left uh, one one thing I see that y'all wanted to mention that we y'all are advertising for uh, a new Catholic Charities executive director position is that one thing that you want to tell me uh, tell the audience about there if anybody out there is interested yes um, the executive uh, director position has been posted um, I'm acting as chief administrative officer with Father Simon Peter who is the interim executive director so we're actively uh, looking for someone who understands parish social ministry those who are you know we've got probably 13 different programs someone who um, can understand the vision the strategy and actually growing and, and developing more services for Catholic charities and, and where would somebody go to apply if they were interested in that uh, we have a, on our website for um, the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau you can go on employment um, uh, on the web page and those positions are posted as well uh, there's also on social media you can find it under Catholic Charities uh, as the, well the websites htdiocese.org just right at the top click on employment all right well thank you all very much for joining us we certainly appreciate thank having you all thank you so much so for much having, having us, us. I appreciate well. it all right stay tuned for more right here on HDB.